Lately, because I have Amazon Prime and I had some digital credits, I decided to start watching some movies that I've missed out on. So recently I watched... I watched Megamind again because it's up for free. Or at least it was. I don't think it's up for free anymore. I watched How to Train Your Dragon because I had never seen it. I heard it's good. And then I had the digital credits, so I just watched The Bad Guys. And I was a little bit surprised because I do like Megamind, and I was wondering how it would compare to the other two movies, which are also good movies. I was surprised that I think of the movies, I would put Megamind at the top, I would put How to Train Your Dragon next, and then I would put the bad guys underneath those two. And I'm not saying any of them are bad movies, they're all fine, but I want to explain from a writing perspective why I ended up doing that. And for anybody who hasn't seen the movies, I'm going to try and avoid spoiling anything. I'm going to talk about it in a more general sense. So for the bad guys, the one that I just watched, I think the issue that came in with that one is, well, you have the, it, it's a heist movie. So you have the main group that does the heists. So you have Wolf, you have Snake, you have Piranha, you have Shark, and you have Tarantula, Webs. So that's five characters. And then you have the governor, Diana Foxington, and then you have the police, I guess she's the police chief or something, and I'm not sure what her name was. I'm not sure if they ever say her name. I know she had one, because I believe it's on her badge, when that's shown pretty quickly. But I'm not sure if they ever, ever actually say it out loud. If they did, I missed it. And then they have um, Marmalade, Professor Marmalade. And I think you might be seeing what the issue is here, just from me saying all those names. It's not a very long movie, and there's a lot of characters to cover in it. That's eight characters in a pretty short film. So obviously you can't spend a lot of time on each of those characters. So I would say the main two are Snake and Wolf and what they go through. And the movie knows this. It starts with them, and they're the ones you're supposed to follow. But because it has all these other characters, it can't spend as much time on them. And a lot of the characters don't have an arc. They pretty much stay the same throughout. Even though they, you know, might switch sides or something, they're still the same character. It's really Wolf and Snake that are having the issues, and the others are just along for the ride. But because there's so many characters, a lot of time that could be going towards what those two are going through has to be divvied up between all these other characters, and they're not really doing that much. You could easily write one or two of them out and give the other ones more time. And that's why I ended up putting that one at the bottom. Because we're watching Wolf go through everything, and we don't even get to really feel like we know him. We don't spend enough time with him, because we have to spend all the time on all these other side things. And it's a heist movie, I know that's what it's kind of copying, with characters doing all their different little parts in the heist. But with how many characters it is, it kind of takes away from the emotional punch just because we don't get to spend the time we need with them. It makes a lot of the scenes feel rushed, and you don't really get to sit and be quiet and have a serious moment because they're going from one character to the next to the next to the next. What are they doing? What are they doing? Now, why did I put How to Train Your Dragon under Megamind? Because How to Train Your Dragon is pretty good. I like the little village that they have set up. When they're physical with each other, it feels like that's how they would be. It doesn't feel like they're just picking on Hiccup. They would all be kind of physical and push each other around. The village, even though Hiccup messes up a lot and they're frustrated with him, it never feels like they're hateful towards him. More like they're just frustrated. They want him to succeed. They want him to be good, but they just don't know what to do about it. I like that you have the blacksmith guy who talks with his dad who, yeah, he's frustrated with Hiccup, but he's also kind of sticking up for Hiccup and being like, you know, you have to let him grow up. Even though we don't know how this is going to turn out, we can't just protect him forever. It's overall pretty good. It has quiet moments. It has moments between the characters that are decently emotional. So where it fell for me, and it's still a good movie, I like the movie, but in comparison to Megamind, I would say the villain. Because what does the villain end up being? You know, I won't get too far into it for people who haven't seen it, but the villain's just a thing that they have to overcome. There's not really a motivation behind it. There's no complex character behind it. It's just sort of a thing. And the other issue is that the dragons are basically just kind of animals. These aren't intelligent dragons as in the ones that talk in other movies and such. 
It's more like how they'll make most creatures into basically dogs in movies. So they're fine and it works okay for the movie, but they're not super complex. And so I would say the main thing that they face and kind of how simple the dragons are is what puts it not really low or anything. It's still a good movie. I like how throughout the movie he's learning how to deal with the dragons and everything and how he's taking what he's learning and applying it to other situations to figure things out. I like that he's problem solving. And that's why I kind of put that one in the second place. It has a lot of good parts and I think it just needed kind of a better villain. So to compare those with Megamind, Megamind has Megamind, Minion, Metro Man, Roxanne, and Hal. And by the time you're done with that movie, you could say a lot about all of those characters. It's just five characters. And they spend a lot of time with every single one developing them. Even though it's not that long of a movie, it feels like they give each one a lot of time. And if you just compare the introduction of Megamind to the introduction of Wolf, by the time Megamind has broken out and talks to Metro Man, you already know all about him and how he got there. And they've told it in an entertaining way. And he's already had an entire breakout section. He's already had a whole interaction with Roxanne, with Minion as his backup. They fit a lot into a very short amount of time. It was very tightly written. And it's not as if it just started out that way. They had earlier drafts which weren't like that. Well, hold on. Uh, I'd heard there was a monster guarding Eagle's torch. Now I've seen it with my own eyes. It's a red soul. I don't think this will take very long, but just to finish up what I was saying with that, every character in the movie feels fleshed out and has an arc. But you can see earlier drafts too, and it used to have a bunch more characters and such. But they cut them down and did what they had to do to get the script really tight. Which is why you don't just expect your first draft of a story to be perfect. You have to keep working on it. And of course, I think the villain in Megamind is better than in How to Train Your Dragon. And I think it also has probably the best opening to a final battle that I've ever seen. Now, back to this. <laughs>